Caitlin and I'm Belinda and welcome to the city. Tonight we're coming to you from Noble Park Football Ground, one of the City of Greater Dandenong's fantastic outdoor sports facilities. And we'll be taking a look at them on tonight's show. And we complete our story on recycling. This week looking at green waste, food waste and how we're getting the message across to our future householders. But first up tonight, Robin Williams gives us an insight into the popular Walker Street Gallery and Art Centre. Hi, I'm here with David O'Halloran, who's the Visual Arts Coordinator for the City of Greater Dandenong. We're at the Walker Street Gallery and Arts Centre. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit about the place, David? Sure, this, uh, this building's an old fire station and uh, old buildings are often perfect for arts and so uh, we, we've got, uh, we run a gallery program here and there's a range of exhibitions that, uh, from community level, student level through to fully fledged uh, Australian international exhibiting artists mm -hmm. and we also have some meeting rooms that are used by various community groups uh, such as the Science Fiction Writers Club for oh, example okay. or we have uh, belly dancing lessons or um, we in our theatre and we also have we're starting to do more and more production uh, presentation in our theatre so at the moment we have a, uh, for running for three nights is a, a comedy show and last year we welcomed La Mama here with the show so we're, we're trying to do, uh, be a more complete arts experience. Now I've had a look around at the current exhibition, External Internal, it's amazing. How many exhibitions do you have here, roughly per year? We do, we do one a month, uh, with the exception of January. Um, and this, this one is a artwork from an artist from Canberra. It's a, it's a solo exhibition. Some of our other exhibitions are uh, group exhibitions with more than one artist in it. We also run a large uh, competition for Australian women artists each year called She, it has a different theme. This year it's She Who Can, and that occurs in March, which is, runs alongside of International Women's Day. Oh. And we also do a big sort of feature exhibition in June, um, in the middle of winter, and that's quite deliberate because there's another program run by one of my colleagues that has a cultural and nighttime installations and a projection out in June. So we do a big project to complement that and it, in part it's about saying, you know, Dandenong's a fantastic place, it's diverse, it's interesting, it's safe even in the middle of winter. Mm -hmm. So uh, this year we're doing a show called Things That Go Bump in the Night. We're a council gallery so we run a very diverse program. So it has, you know, breadth and depth and it has quality and diversity I guess mm. is a bit of the catchphrase for the gallery. So how do arts lovers out there find out more about what's happening? Well, we use a number of channels, so we have a, a traditional mailing list with a traditional invitation card sent out uh, every month, which includes all of act our activities, not just our exhibitions. Mm -hmm. um, we have a website, which is uh, walkerstreetstgallery.com.au, and we also have a Facebook account as well. Um, people can always ring us, and uh, we're always happy to to chat and put people on the mailing list mm -hmm. or an email list should they wish to. We're now in the foyer of the Walker Street Gallery and Art Centre. Now David, what is this space used for? We use this for community level exhibitions or new and emerging artists that uh, just want to get some feedback on their work, mm -hmm. give it a run. So it, it serves as the foyer to our theatre but it also serves as a space for showing, you know, untrained artists sometimes or or a little little project. This particular body of work is uh, from Ken Blackmore. Now he spent most of his life in Western Australia, but his sons moved into the area. His father is no longer with us, and so Jason just wanted to do a little something to celebrate the memory of his father. And of course, that's you know that's a wonderful thing to be mm. able to to do. Um, so this is our sort of second space. It's a lot smaller. It's a little more modest, and and we also have a third space during winter, which is a projection window, and we, which is out on the street and uh, pedestrians and uh, well, lots of buses go past here too. So we often theme it to sort of things like travel and oh. transport and and things like that. So last year we started 
started off the program with someone having a driving lesson on this video uh, which appeared on the street corner so that attracted a lot of a lot of interest mm. um, so we have sort of three exhibition programs and, and this is the second the second venue I guess now this is the theatre uh, I can see it's all set up for the bullet um, what else what what else is this space used for it's used a lot for classes and uh, the belly dancing classes or the Sri Lankan Folkloric Music Society and things like that. Uh, Fusion Theatre, who are a disability theatre company, use it a lot. Um, and we're also trying to move more towards not just doing the rehearsals and the workshops, which are important, but we want to do the, the presentation of theatre and the presentation of music as well. So at the moment it's Bullet, which is a superhero comedy. Last year we had uh, La Mama Theatre do present the Sarajevo suite here. We also did a concert with uh, George Kamikawa and Noriko Tandano, there's a music concert. And we'll do uh, a music concert as part of our big exhibition in June as well. So we're trying to kind of uh, have, have it in use day and night in mm. quite a creative way. And it's quite a multi-purpose room, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Mm. It's sort of got raked seating and it's got a you know, a lighting grid and basic sound equipment and mm -hmm. it seats it seats about 70, so that's a good intimate size, yes. good for lectures and talks and and things as well. So come on down to the Walker Street Gallery and Arts Centre. It's well worth a look. Right across the road from the Dandenong tra train station, so excellent access. And thank you for showing me around today, David. I've learnt a lot and had a great time. My pleasure. Thanks for popping in. Thank you. You know, Belinda, when it comes to sport, I reckon Greater Dandenong boasts some of the best facilities around. I couldn't agree more, Caitlin. Whether it be pavilions or playing surfaces, our sport participants in this city are well catered for. They certainly are. Louise Francuni recently got the good oil from those who plant and maintain our sports ovals and pavilions. Starting with Greater Dandenong Sport and Leisure Team Leader, John Weeks. So John, we're here now in Warner Reserve. It's a new facility, tell us a little bit about its features. Yeah Louise, it's uh, one of our fantastic new facilities at City of Greater Dandenong. It's We call it a community facility. It's uh, uh, It entails a, a large uh, multi-purpose uh, sports pavilion with community facilities. It has four lots of change rooms with very high level uh, bathrooms, showers, disability toilets, uh, also first aid room. Uh, it's the home of our local uh, um, soccer club, South Springvale Soccer Club, as well as we promoting as a lot of community use through birthday parties. Uh, it has a commercial kitchen, storage areas, and of course looks out into these magnificent playing fields down here at uh, Warner Reserve. It's a really exciting facility, a $2.5 million investment by council, which we hope uh, will be a prototype going forward. It also uh, has great cross-flow ventilation, designed with solar heating. Uh, it also has really nice natural light and, uh, as I said, a really uh, a fully accessible building with commercial um, kitchen facilities, dishwashers, nice food preparation, bars, um, and, uh, as I said, a lot of, a lot of accessible facilities that uh, the change rooms can open up to increase the uh, social space within the pavilion to almost double the size. So a fantastic community facility that could be used for parties. Uh, we've got an educational group going in here this year and certainly the local sporting community are very happy with it. So this style of building, is it a prototype for other venues that you plan on constructing within the city of Greater Dandenong? Yeah, look, Council has uh, a number of sports pavilions and community facilities that we're looking at up upgrading. Uh, over the next five to ten years, our sports facility plans identified a whole range of, of our ageing infrastructure, in particular our sports uh, pavilions. Uh, we're looking at doing this uh, type of facility uh, depending on budget uh, over the next five to ten years. There's certainly a, another three or four we'd love to build, but uh, of course we need uh, grant opportunities and funding. A very large investment by Council for this one of two and a half million dollars. Uh, obviously it brings a lot to the community being really those high quality change facilities, um, the shower facilities, disability facilities and commercial social spaces. Uh, but once again we need to plan those and we're looking at a number of at the moment. Kamura Reserve, uh, Norman Luth Reserve and, and Greaves Reserve are some of the ones that we're we're in planning and design phase. 
boys. This is a great project and a, a really significant history to this place. Originally the home of the Dandenong District Netball Association, now moved to Greaves Reserve. We've done a council's done a major redevelopment uh, of this facility, and uh, we're really excited about it. We've had to. It was a very ageing facility, and, and we've resurfaced the floor. Uh, we've, as you can see, uh, just finished uh, recently in January, and we've now got uh, facilities for indoor hockey and indoor soccer and of course the outdoor hockey it's, hockey. it's the home of the Warriors Hockey uh, Club in the city of Greater Dandenong and of course the capacity for indoor soccer now in the facility now that we've added this beautiful uh, safety netting and padding and we've done a large redevelopment obviously with the floor adding all the markings for uh, indoor soccer and indoor hockey. We've also done some really significant upgrades to the change rooms, uh, new showers, change rooms, mirrors, um, new coats of paint, really freshen up the place because it was ageing. And we've got some fantastic um, new uh, commercial kitchen uh, facility in there for the uh, hockey club to use and other user groups. So we're really excited about this facility. We've got a great partnership with Hockey Victoria and other user groups, and we're looking to have more indoor soccer. So those looking for an indoor soccer or futsal venue, it's all marked out and a great opportunity to hire a facility at a good rate for, uh, for those sports through winter and summer months. Of course, the outdoor synthetic pitch adds to this one of the two facilities, perhaps the only facility in Victoria that offers both indoor hockey and an outdoor synthetic pitch. Well, we're out here on this new synthetic surface. It's just fantastic. But would you like to tell us a little bit about the features that uh, you're going to be installing here? Yeah, Louise, it is a great, it's only been down about 12 months, the Mills Reserve uh, Synthetic Hockey Pitch and Soccer Facility. It's a great, uh, great surface for uh, the Warriors Hockey Club and the Victorian Hockey League that play matches here. Um, we also have some soccer use and training on the facility, so it's a very high quality synthetic pitch. It complements, of course, the great indoor facility that we're developing with Mills to offer both opportunity for indoor hockey, soccer and, of course, the outdoor hockey. So it, it really is an exciting time. We're also upgrading the floodlighting here. It's a, it's a massive commitment by the City of Greater Dandenong and the Sport and Leisure Department. We're uh, committing to upgrade the lights here by April. We'll have all new uh, 350 Lux lighting, compliant lighting for hockey, which is a really exciting project. So a huge investment by Council as well as Warner Reserve with new 200 Lux lighting and Tatterson Park, we would also our new facility over at Tatterson installing new lighting there. And finally Ross Reserve with the soccer there and the athletics, uh, athletics facility will have 200 Lux lighting. So we're here at Shepley Oval and over the last 18 months I believe there's been a lot of uh, redevelopment gone into this upstairs area. Is there any further uh, plans to redevelop the rest of the venue? Yeah, Louise, look, there's been a huge commitment by Council to the Shepley facility, this beautiful, magnificent balcony that we can see the panorama around to the grandstand. This has all been added with a, a disability uh, toilet and also lift into the Shepley facility. So the upstairs project has been a huge one for Council, the redevelopment in our major ground for obviously Daniel Cricket Club and the AFL Stingrays. The next phase of the project is really exciting. It's a big commitment to redevelop the downstairs, which uh, obviously seeing all the footage of the existing change rooms, very old uh, toilet facilities and fairly old gymnasium space. All of that gymnasium space will be redeveloped into a large, larger gymnasium as well as uh, much improved uh, change rooms for the AFL Stingrays and the Dandon Cricket Club so with some office space. So a really exciting redevelopment that we're looking at doing over the next 12 months. The design and planning is being done now and in the next uh, 12 to 18 months we'd like to see all that ground floor redevelopment completed with a great new gym and, and office space and facilities for the community as well as the AFL Stingrays and Dandon Cricket Club which have been a, you know very successful clubs in recent times obviously with Peter Siddle and uh, James Patterson in the Australian team so a, a fantastic effort by that club and of course all the draftees that regularly come out over the years from the AFL Stingray so a great project and one uh, community sport and recreation is certainly looking forward to doing. Well we're here at Shepley Oval with Michael Beck the team leader of turf services for the city of Greater Dandenong. Michael tell us what is involved with producing the surface for Premier Sport? The surface needs to be, as you say, a Premier, a premier surface and, and we believe we have a Premier surface. What we do over the winter period, we oversaw with, with a cool season grass to, to give the, the other colour. So the surface is um, not only safe and nice for the players to use, aesthetically uh, pleasing to, to the visitors, uh, and during the summer period, we, we remove that, that uh, transitional um, uh, cool season grass and we're left with the surface that we have for here now, a cooch, 100% cooch playing surface. Within the city of Greater Dandenong, there's 50 
sports grounds, AFL grounds and cricket grounds obviously, uh, soccer grounds, softball and baseball. 17 of those grounds have two uh, turf wickets and they're, and they're managed by eight, eight curators and full-time staff. Do you feel that Greater Dandenong has been a trendsetter with these new drought resistant grasses? It, well they've certainly, they've certainly led the way in that area. Um, a lot of other local governments have, have had field trips to our, our region or our municipality to have a look at the success of our program. Um, all of our sporting grounds have, have been converted to, to warm season grasses which was, which was a great, a great uh, water saving initiative obviously with, um, over, over the drought period. Uh, very successful. What the surface used to be like in the old days um, used to be just an old rye grass surface with different species of grass in it and once we converted it to the cooch it's just sort of maintenance wise you could nearly say it's maintenance free. It's, it's a great grass to try and look after, it's so easy just to maintain it, you know. Hardly any watering, you know, you get um, hot periods during the summer and we don't have to water whereas normally with the rye grass we'd be pumping gallons and gallons of water into it to maintain it. So. No, it's the best thing they ever thought of. So Phil, you take great pride in your grounds and you know the preparation for both cricket and football and the wicket and things like that. With the footy club and the cricket club, I get along very well with them both sides. Um, they work with me, I work with them, which is a, a great thing. They give me help with covers and that when I need um, help. And um, oh, just, a, just a good relationship with them, it's quite good. I, I enjoy it and get to meet the boys, like Peter and Paddo and some of the other boys. Cameron White come from here too. So I've um, seen them come up through the ranks and, and watch them go and do, you know, Australian cricket is fantastic and it makes me feel good. And what do you find is the biggest issue with maintenance of these grounds? Okay, what we find, what we find as the biggest issue is illegal use of the grounds. So, so groups, groups of people that are wanting to use our wonderful facilities are actually using them unallocated or, or they haven't actually put in a casual, for a, ca a casual ground booking. We have uh, a groups of people, like I say, wanting to use our, our, our fabulous uh, facilities, which, you know, which we encourage, but what we would like to happen is, is that those groups get in contact with our sport and leisure department and actually arrange, arrange for an allocation you know, for their groups to use. It's all rubbish, Belinda. Of course it is, Caitlin, and it has to be recycled. Daryl Pittman concludes his report on where our rubbish ends up. A few weeks ago on the show, we saw what happened to our curbside rubbish and how it was recycled. This week we wrap up our story on recycling and look at what happens to our green waste and our food waste. We visited NRS, or Natural Recovery Systems, in Dandenong South for the inside story. I'm with Tony Strobey from Natural Recovery Systems. Tony, this is where our green waste ends up. You're going to take us through the process. OK, this is the first point of call. It's uh, the way bridge where we actually take the weight of the material inside the vehicle and then we'll be heading off to our unloading pad where we uh, unload the green waste onto our designated pad for unloading. Once the uh, green waste has been uh, put on the receivable pad, after this time it will be uh, mulched by a subcontractor mulcher and taken inside and mixed with the food waste. This is our organic food waste being delivered which we will uh, mix in with the mulch to, uh, at the second stage of making our organic compost. The uh, food waste and the curbside green waste has been mixed together. Uh, we are using the front end loader to load the in-vessel uh, composting unit. This will be in there for 10 days till the time that it's uh, pasteurised 
its time in the Invesal composting unit. The temperature of 55 degrees for a period of 72 hours is required for pasteurisation to occur. The result is this fully recycled organic compost. Healthy soil all ready to grow our next feed of fruit and vegetables. So there it is, that's where our garden waste and food waste goes. Tony, thank you very much for taking us through the process today. Thank you very much and uh, hopefully we, in the future we can close the loop a bit more with food waste and green waste uh, recycling and uh, hopefully everyone gets a bit of compost and throws it in the garden and closes the loop fully. Thank you. Well, you're certainly doing your bit. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yes, education plays an important role in our recycling efforts. And recyclers like NRS and Polytrade Recycling, featured on a recent show, in tandem with companies such as Tees, run education programs at their plant. The City of Greater Dandenong is also active in educating children about recycling, as we found out when we visited Chandler Park Primary School. I work for the waste and you know cleansing section of City of Greater Dandenong and uh, I run a series of uh, waste education programs uh, through uh, various schools throughout the municipality. So I'll basically go in and talk about uh, the reduce, reuse, recycle uh, concept uh, hierarchy and I pretty much educate the kids on what can and can't be recycled, you know, going to our blue recycling bins at home as well as composting, the do's and don'ts with composting and I suppose the do's and don'ts with um, the green waste and pretty much just educating the children on you know what happens beyond the curbside so after the trucks empty those uh, three bins the recycling rubbish and uh, the green waste and where it all ends up and how the recycling and green waste gets um, processed and sorted etc. And there's no doubt that the kids are quickly picking up the message. I've learned some things what to put in recycle and what to put under rubbish so I know what what items can be recycled and what items that I shall put in the rubbish. It's just amazing how much they pick up, like even when, um, before I even come along to the sessions, it's just amazing, you know, how much knowledge that these kids actually have. And it's in fact the children who educate um, the parents and actually take that knowledge away with um, what they've learnt at school and they take it away with the parents and particularly with I guess Greater Dainong being a multicultural municipality so a lot of those kids um, from the current generation are able to you know take that knowledge back to the parents and you know educate them because in a lot of these countries um, recycling is unheard of and they never practice it obviously in their own homeland so um, when they come to Australia it's a whole new world for them pretty much so yeah it's just amazing how I guess much kids can play and um, an important role that they can play in educating um, their parents and you know the community. I learned that we should put different things inside the recycle bin and the garbage bin like the things that could be recycled like boxes and cardboard and all of that could go inside the recycle and the garbage can be like gloves or sponges because they can't be reused. It's amazing as to how much things actually go home and the information that they get told that come from the children. So it is very exciting that they are here today learning about sustainability and waste and that they'll go home and share that with their parents. If you'd like to know more about recycling in the city of Greater Dandenong, just visit the website and click on the Environment Waste tab. This Sunday sees the running of the annual City of Greater Dandenong Noble Park Gift at Moodamere Reserve. It's a full day of great running events, the fun kicking off at 9.30am. It has become a recognised event on the VAL calendar and it's one that um, has brought in the community generally. We range from people last year coming from as far as Kilmore over here to run in the junior events and you know the older ones who have come all over the state just to come down and run and the track here is noted as being one of the better in my opinion if not the best track around we're looking to a, a, a big occasion on next sunday well that's it for another show and would you believe it next week is our final show of the series so don't miss it and until then bye, bye for, for now, now.